We've got Alberto here from the University of Greenwich. We're going to be doing a seminar on art and design. So if you're joining us, do let us know where your name and where you're from. I've already seen a few names and yeah, where you're from coming in. We've got someone from Serbia, Dubai, Uzbekistan, Indonesia. Great crowd to see. So yeah, over to you, Alberto. Thank you so much, Ravina. Welcome, everybody. It's so good to have you here. Uh, my name is Albert and I uh, am part of the International Office at the University of Greenwich. Uh, it's a pleasure to be introducing the School of Design to you today. Um, we will be going through the courses that we teach at the University within the School of Design at undergraduate and postgraduate level. The University of Greenwich, in case you're not uh, very familiar with it, is a London-based university and the School of Design is based very, very close to the campus that you can see right behind me. That's the main Greenwich campus and that's about 20, 15, 20 minutes away by public transport uh, into the centre of London. So before we kick off with today's session, I'm just going to play a little video for you. Um, just to give you an idea um, about what Greenwich is like. So bear with me one moment while I share my screen. really great. My experience in the University of Greenwich made me believe in myself. Because first of all, the location is great. Like, I literally get two trains. It's literally just close to home. Okay, wonderful. I hope you could uh, all hear that and see that. Um, so next, I'd like to invite um, Anastasios Mariannis, our Deputy Head of School of Design, who will be introducing this school to you and our wonderful team of academics who have joined us today to introduce and to talk to you about our different programs that sit within the school. So please, Anastasios, over to you when you're ready. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to this call. I know that there are a couple of quite a few students here uh, that are watching this, uh, but also there are um, quite a few on uh, on live on YouTube at the moment. So welcome to those that are in this Zoom call, but also to those that are watching us from YouTube. I'm very pleased to introduce you to the School of Design. We are. Um, I see myself, Alberto. Do you want to? Uh, yes, Ravina, if you can, uh, would you mind um, giving spotlight to Anastasia so we can start yes, sharing? Yes, of course. Slides? Thank you. Great. So um, 
The School of Design, as Alberto and Ravina said, uh, is in London. I mean, it's a fantastic place, a fantastic place to be, uh, even under COVID-19 situation and, and, and lockdown. So the school is in the heart of Greenwich. We are in zone two from central London. And the school over uh, uh, includes a number of different uh, disciplines, and that is film and TV, landscape architecture and architecture, uh, media and design, graphic design and animation. So a variety of different disciplines, variety of resources uh, to, uh, for our students. We are, this is our new fantastic building with uh, 12 landscape roofs uh, where we have all the facilities for the students to explore, research, play even, and learn at the end of the day. So uh, our sessions in the school are uh, taking place in various formats. Um, you might be working in the film and TV studio, or you might work in the studio, you might go through a number of crits or other areas in the school where you can explore your creativity. And um, every year, at the end of the year, we are celebrating our student work with a massive exhibition, which unfortunately last year, because of COVID, didn't take place. However, uh, this year, uh, we're going to go back and have an exhibition and our students will be able to, uh, to, to show their work and, uh, and uh, uh, celebrate their achievements. So um, we have in our new building, which is like uh, uh, it, it, we came in in the last five, six years, we have stayed, uh, it's a state of the art building with facilities that lots of uh, professional creative studios will uh, be jealous. Uh, this is one of the three film and TV studios we have in the University of Greenwich. Uh, you can see that uh, some of the work is happening there. And also uh, here is our, one of our um, uh, workshops where students, especially in architecture and design and landscape architecture, they can really um, uh, focus on making, on model making, on uh, 3D printing, laser cutting, etc. Those are facilities for our students to use. So every year, the, the School of Design is producing a number of um, annual catalogs, not as a similar, not in the catalogs that we expect to see based on the program structures but celebrating student work. All our graduates and alumni are in those books here where you can download if you check online or we can put you the link here and have a look where you can see work from our students in graphic design, animation, landscape, urbanism, architecture, media, film, and television. So this is where we're celebrating our end of year students work. So for those that they would like to know more about the, um, the, the, the students and the work and the, the work we do, you can visit the greschool.design website. Uh, you can get some ideas about um, who we are, what we're doing. Uh, it's a fun place to be, guys. I mean, uh, we are in the heart of London. We're offering disciplines that... Uh, kind of the, how the not, project uh, so far. Uh, not many other institutions may offer. And then... Um, so you, and while I'm introducing you to my colleagues that uh, they're representing the portfolio of the programs that we are offering, I'm gonna keep my screen on so I can go on this website and show some of the work that the students uh, do. Before I go to this though, I wanna tell you that um, the University of Greenwich uh, initiative this year, we are offering um, a 3000 pounds bursary for EU students. And I'm sure that if you have more information and you want to join the school, I think that's a great opportunity. It's the first thing on the website of the University of Greenwich, you can see. So if you're willing to study uh, here in, in this fantastic place, please uh, have a look on this. So um, I'm going to go online while I am introducing to some of my colleagues. Um, so uh, with us today, we have Ed Wall, Hi, Ed. Uh, Ed is, uh, is the portfolio lead uh, in architecture, uh, in landscape architecture. Ed, you can say hello. <laughs> Hi, Anastasis. Hi, everybody. Nice to, uh, nice to be here. Um, welcome, to, uh, welcome to Greenwich, virtually. Um, and uh, yeah, do ask any questions either in the chat or uh, 
contact us and let us know. Do you want me to Great. explain the programs, Anastasios, or are you just doing introductions? I think I'll do the introduction quickly, then I'm going to come back to you. Okay, so the next one I see is uh, Maria. Maria Krolkova is the portfolio leader for um, uh, media and communication. Hi, everyone. Uh, really nice to be here and uh, to have such an international audience and media portfolio we're really well by, as well as in school of design international students are our core so I'm really looking forward to um, chatting with you if you have any questions about our media programs please yeah send a message thank you Maria I don't know how we're dealing with the people online on YouTube but I'm not sure if they are available to answer questions on YouTube so Alberto if we can keep an eye on the YouTube channel, in case we have questions there, we can ask them through here. Then next on my screen is Susanna Aisha, where she represents the architecture for the school. Hello, Susanna. You are muted. Um, excuse, uh, sorry, uh, schoolboy error or, or schoolgirl error. Um, um, I'm really pleased to be here and uh, I really would like to talk about architecture with those of you that are interested because I think this is a great place to do it. We're very interested in design in particular and, you know, we have a great team. Great, Susanna. We'll come back to you on that. Um, later. Anastasios, you're frozen. <laughs> Great. So uh, the next one I see on the screen is... Is he still Chris. frozen? Hello. I think it's Susanna. Can we... I, I don't... Th he doesn't look frozen to me. He looks okay, so fine. I think it's... Okay, Susanna's it's my... It's my uh, I've got an unstable situation. Okay, great. So I'm going to go next to Chris Nunn. Chris Nunn is representing the film and television uh, program. Uh, hi, Chris. Hi guys, lovely to uh, be here and see some of you uh, online from all over the world. That's fantastic. Uh, as some other colleagues have said, international students form a, a bedrock uh, for, for our programmes as well, both at undergraduate and at postgraduate levels. So uh, yes, anything film and television production related, uh, then uh, I'm the one to answer your questions this afternoon. Fantastic. Thank you. And last but not least is my colleague Elena. We're representing the design portfolio here today. Hi everyone, I am the program leader of the MA, the brand new MA in design and also representing the graphic and digital design uh, BA program. And uh, okay. it's amazing that you're all here. So for any graphic di digital design and design related questions, I'm the person to ask. Great, and also Elena will answer your question about the animation program as well. So what we're going to do today, for those that are here with us in Zoom or YouTube, um, I'm going to create like I'm going to um, create a discussion between uh, my colleagues here. So we'll give them the chance to talk about their programs, uh, their offering, maybe some of the employability statistics, the student experience in the institution, etc. So and then in the same time, we'll be able to answer any question you might have. So. I'm going, uh, if that's all right, I'm going to share my screen. And in the same time, when I'm talking about uh, our work and our programs, I'm going to, I hope you can see my screen now. I want to talk about, um, I, I want to show you work of the students. So um, I'll start with Ed. Uh, and Ed, he's going to talk to us about landscape architecture. Thanks, Anastasios. Um, hi, everyone, again. Uh, I oversee the landscape architecture and urban design courses here in Greenwich. Uh, we've been teaching landscape architecture here since 1965 with eminent lecturers such as Sir Geoffrey Jellicoe and amazing graduates such as Marty Frank. You'll see in some of the images here, this is uh, examples of student work, the diversity of work that, that the students produce. Uh, there's some unique things about studying landscape architecture and urban design here at Greenwich. And I think that uh, it's evident within the student work, sort of the high quality of work that's produced at the cutting edge of the profession. Uh, we give design a, a strong focus in the courses here, uh, taught by leading practitioners from across London. And students do projects just like you would do in a professional practice. And after three years of the undergraduate course or one or two years of the master's, uh, we have a very high rate of employment of graduates. 100% of our graduates in recent years have been employed um, in, in leading practices in London and around the world. Um, one of the other uh, important aspects of what we do here at Greenwich is um, 
or one of the important aspects are the facilities we have. The 14 green roofs we have in the building are quite unique. They're sort of designed as laboratories for the landscape architecture students. So in addition to the design projects, these are supported by very strong technical and research teaching um, by uh, some of the best researchers um, um, from around the world. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Ed. I think that it was like brings together some kind of like the whole uh, portfolio in, in a couple of minutes. I would appreciate if the rest do the same so we can have some time to um, answer questions um, um, for other colleagues. So I'm going to go to media and I'm going to ask Maria to tell us more about the offerings in, in her portfolio. Hi everyone, so and welcome to the media portfolio of the University of Greenwich. Here we have uh, four media programs, two at the BA level and two at the MA level. And at the BA level we have media and communications and film studies. So all things that deal with content production, but also uh, visual content, uh, textual content, uh, any kind of media that you want to communicate with creatively. Um, but also analyze it and think what is going on in the world and how you can incorporate that in your own thinking. So the, these are both quite kind of analytical theoretical program with a huge focus on your own creativity, your own making and your own production of content. And this the same if you want to upgrade on that or if you're thinking of a postgraduate level, the same can be said about our postgraduate programs, MA Media and Creative Cultures and MA Digital Arts. So there you form yourself there, the two sister programs, one is more kind of, again, theoretical, a lot of an analytical skills, lots of writing, lo lots of um, talking and uh, analyzing contemporary cultures as it is in London. We go a lot to the exhibitions, um, museums, artist studios, and the second one, MA Digital Arts, a lot of making. So we are creating an artist out of you. Uh, there's, you you're working now amazing studios uh, at Stockwell Street, which Anastasia just showed you. Uh, and making your own projects. So again, so you can choose between um, being more kind of practical and media based or again, or doing something like a dissertation and creating reflective uh, research work. And these are options available across all the programs in the media portfolio. And one of the highlights of you know being studying media and st studying communication, so film studies or digital arts in London, that it is a heart of creative industries. Uh, and many of our students, you know, talk to creative practitioners to who come to our programs, but also go out and work for them. So we have amazing cases: students going to work for something like Google, Framestore, uh, large corporations, but also to quite a lot of students who think about, you know, things that are really important today, like digital activism, some charities works um, and things like that. So again, our strength is in this variety of media that we can give you. So you can, you know, come into our programs, you can make your own choice, but you'll be given all the skills that you need to make that choice confidently. So I'll, I'll stop here, but I'll be very uh, excited to answer all your I'll questions. I'll come back to you, Maria. Definitely, I'm going to come and ask some questions. And then I'm going to go and pass uh, to Chris. And I would like Chris to talk to us a bit about uh, film and TV and television. Chris, are you with us? Uh, yes, I am with you. At least I hope I am. Uh, yeah, welcome. Uh, film and TV at the University of Greenwich is, um, is really about helping you guys to develop your understanding of what it means to be uh, a filmmaker. We take an approach that we call the total filmmaker, which means that all of our students, uh, this is certainly at undergraduate level, but perhaps at postgraduate as well, have a, a complete understanding and immersion in the whole production process, all the way from kind of uh, ideas and conception uh, through to uh, exhibition and who's actually going to watch your film and engage with your work. Uh, what we want to do over the three years at undergraduate is get you to develop your work your voice uh, and your kind of portfolio um, in conjunction obviously with your peers. So our undergraduate is quite a busy program with about 70 students a year. Um, and really the MA and MSc programs uh, do the same thing, but, it, but encourage you to, to sort of push your practice even further. Uh, we, we embed very strong critical uh, skills in our students by asking them to think about research led practice and indeed your film practice as research. Uh, this, is, this is over and above the sort of uh, craft skills that make up kind of film and television production. You'll get those, but we want to push you further than that to really question what it is you're doing and why. 
uh, and have a good think about why, uh, you know, forming yourself as a sort of reflexive practitioner, someone who can go out into the world, uh, you know, uh, in, in film and TV industries, yes, that could be right, but, but uh, uh, harking a bit to what Maria was saying, wider media uh, industries as well that can utilize the skill set that you develop with us. Uh, but really yeah, strong, strong critical grounding uh, embedded in, uh, in practice uh, as well. Fantastic, Chris. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it's also good to add here that uh, in the film and TV uh, program, our students, they get engaged with um, awards, they get uh, us across all the other portfolios as well. So we will talk about this later as well. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go from film and TV for a short introduction to architecture. Uh, and then Susanna, uh, you unmute your mic and then you tell us everything about it. All right, brilliant, brilliant. I, I, I got a bit concerned because like today I've, I've had serious issues with my internet, so I hope you can all hear me. But um, architecture is, as I say, we are, we are in London. London is the hub of architecture in the United Kingdom. We um, have the most context to the profession, but also to other parts of, of our co consultation um, process, like engineers and other building um, things. And I think that why would I choose Greenwich? Why would I choose to go to Greenwich? One, it's in a World Heritage site. One, it not only looks at old architecture or traditional architecture, but also it is within a, a modern idea of what, what the world is. So we are looking onto Canary Wharf. The course is very driven by practitioners. All our staff have are, are, are practitioners, either practitioners, part practitioners, as well as within the teaching profession itself. I myself have taught for over 30 years. And I feel it's really, really important to have a kind of proper grounding and, and understanding of what architecture is. And um, I welcome any questions to do with architecture um, that you might be interested in. But the, the main thing is, is that you have to realize is that our priorities are within the design world and our context to it, our contact to it. I, I direct contact to people who are practicing both within our school and outside of it. Is that great? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Suzanne. I mean, um, it's good to know. I'm, I'm sure you're going to tell us a bit more about our international partners as well in architecture, but also about architecture in the UK, which is part two, part one, part two, and part three. Is oh, yeah. sure that some of our students would like to know more about it. So um, I'm going to go to Elena Papadaki, where Elena she is going to, to tell us more about um, the design portfolio, which includes also graphic design, animation, and web design. Hi everyone. So first of all, I'm going to start with the undergraduate program. So graphic and digital design and animation. Uh, graphic and digital design takes a practical and theoretical approach to design to pre prepare you for careers in the creative industries. So we give uh, a big weight towards theory and the conceptual framework that will get you going. But also we focus a lot on the hands-on experience in our studios our 3D printing uh, uh, workshops and all the equipment that you might need in order to, um, uh, to, to do well in your studies. Uh, so we are uh, dealing with uh, typography, experimental studio practices, branding, advertising, narrative and sequence, and final major projects that relate to real life uh, case studies and portfolios from the creative industries. and. What we're hoping for, for you to get by the end of your studies is um, really good career options uh, for our graphic and digital design graduates with roles in creative agencies, particularly those specializing in print, publishing, packaging, branding, and interaction design. Now, as far as the BA in animation is concerned, uh, it follows the same principle of combining theory and practice and having a very hands-on approach in terms of the technical experience that you acquire during your studies and the equipment that you're offered in order to do so. And it's designed to provide all the skills that you need to get into film, uh, 
uh, TV, visual, or uh, video game industries. It covers a range of subjects from 2D and 3D animation and storytelling to the technical computer skills that you would need uh, for animation practice itself. Uh, optional modules help you develop specific skills for working games, VFX, film, and television. And they're also useful for mm. other industries within the creative sector. So that's it from the BA, graphic and digital design on one hand, animation oh. on the other. And now I'm moving on to the master's degrees that we offer. Uh, first of all, the very well established MA in web design and content planning. Uh, it's one of the very few MAs in the country that specifically focus on a hands-on approach to web design and content planning. So in on the technical, functional and aesthetic approaches to website design. And during this master's, you learn about industry best practice for markup, compliance, user experience, information architecture, uh, content strategy and accessibility. So this in turn will allow you to create and manage websites that provide a good user experience. And the skills from this course are ideal for growing filled with fantastic opportunities for your future. And uh, last but not least, we have a brand new uh, and newly launched MA in design, where I'll be the program leader. This is a program that will start in September 2021. And uh, uh, it's a program that focus on diversity and inclusivity by design. Uh, so uh, apart from the main idea of you learning about design and you learning about how to work with this industry and to acquire the specific skills, there's a further focus on the idea of diversity and inclusion by design. Uh, this Masters in Design has three different options that you can choose from. The first one is MA in Design that focuses more on visual communication. The second one is spatial design, which, as the title suggests, focuses more on spatial politics and ideas of space and architecture in relation to inclusivity and diversity. And the third one is uh, design diplomacy that focuses more on public relations and uh, a certain collaboration between design practices and uh, different cultural institutions. So I'll be very, very happy to answer any questions about any of those four programs. And I will put into the chat uh, the web pages of all four programs for you to look at uh, as we present the rest of our programs. Great. Uh, and I'm sure that my colleagues will do the same. And then I'm sure that um, Alberto and the organizers of this event will put more here. Obviously, for those people that are on YouTube or those people that are on Facebook at the moment, they're watching this. Um, you will be able to see the links later on, on those channels. Uh, and then if you have already registered for this event, it means that you will be able to, um, to receive more information about the programs. The reason, uh, I think you got an idea more or less in the last 20, 25 minutes about what we are offering. But actually this inform there's information you can find online about the structure of each, uh, of each program. So what I would like my colleagues, and I'm going to target some questions along your questions, is about what it is to be a student at the University of Greenwich, in particular in the School of Design, but also what it means to be a graduate, an alumni for, uh, from the design school. And I'm going to start with my colleague, Chris Nunn. Uh, and Chris, uh, do you want to tell us a bit about uh, how do you bring together practice and theory, and what is the day-to-day experience for our students? Um, yeah, theory and practice, whenever I speak to students, I say I really hate that dichotomy because it sounds like the two things have absolutely no relation to each other. And uh, as with most things in life, uh, really, it's much more complicated than that. Uh, so I think let's not distinguish is what we say to our students, you know, uh, read, research, look at the history uh, and bring that into your kind of contemporary practice. Uh, these things aren't separate. They're all designed to inform more of a more of a kind of ecology, I suppose. Um, and I think that that's what we say to our students. So really, we've got a very diverse community of students uh, on film and TV. 
uh, production. And I think they inspire each other and we inspire each other. And in fact, students inspire us uh, in conversations about films and TV programs and things that each other haven't seen. Uh, and we, we grab those and we run with them and we take them away. Uh, students quite often in seminars will show things that, that again, um, staff haven't seen or come across. Uh, and we think that makes for quite a lively film culture, really, uh, of, of, of showing each other work and trying to inspire each other. And I do mean each other because quite often I see films that students put out there and I'm like, huh, I've never seen that. That's fantastic. Thanks for showing it. I think, Chris, though, what you're describing is really cool. Can I ask a question from you? Uh, if we can just put the question in the chat box, that would be fantastic. Is that right? So we can address the questions in the meantime, is that okay? Well, uh, how many IELTS score needs? I th yeah, so if we can put the question, then we can answer those questions through the chat. Uh, great. So, uh, Chris, uh, as I was saying earlier, that this is fantastic to, to know because it's across the whole areas in the school. And, and I'm sure that from landscape architecture, um, the practice is, it is different, but it's not much different, right, Ed? Absolutely, Anastasio. So uh, landscape architecture is primarily a design practice. Uh, and you know, one of the great things about the uh, programs being in the design school here in Greenwich is the intersection with all the other disciplines crossing over with architecture, animation, graphic design, film, and TV and graphics. It's, uh, you know, I, th I think it's, uh, it's interesting to work in somewhere like landscape architecture where you're combining social concerns with environmental uh, issues and um, and addressing them through an inventive design practice. I think for us, I'd say um, the the context of the design school in in Stockholm Street and our you know amazing facilities that we have is uh, you know, really one of the the best places in the world to study landscape architecture and, and also urban design. Great, uh, Susanna, because we're talking in that kind of area of architecture now, and um, uh, I would like to know more from your perspective about. Uh, how the students that they are, what's the experience of students being in an architecture studio and how that degree in architecture helped them to get a job uh, after they graduate? You're still muted, sorry. <laughs> Excuse, sorry, apologies. I think I'm gonna get two t-shirts that says like, you're still muted. But anyway, um, I would like to echo um, Ed's comments because I think they are pertinent to architecture. And I do also think that Ed, Ed Wall offers, if you're interested in landscape architecture, a fantastic course. Now, I think the thing about um, um, studying architecture is that it is a very, uh, you, you required a lot of discipline, a lot of commitment. And, and that is what we try to encourage people. The studio is very, very important to us because it's a place where students get to see one another's work, right? It's not a private activity. It's a, it's a communal activity as is the making of architecture. And I think that this, this idea of being in studio and, and being around students, not just from your own year, but being able to see um, students from other years, being to, able to participate in, 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 in public events, or, or you might call them semi-private events, which are called um, pin-ups or crits, where, where everybody um, displays their work and talks about it, is I think a, a discipline that we try to encourage because one of the things that we have to do in architecture is we have to commit to our vision, right? And how we communicate those ideas because that is very, very difficult when you're, you're first starting out. And therefore one, one has to learn to overcome one's nerves, to be confident in what one's saying and to feel a certain pride in what one's doing. And that, that's why we as the staff are, are there to support you to do this. Amazing, that's a very good point about the support. And I'll come to this later, asking a couple of questions about the support we're providing. But for the, in, in some of you asking questions about, I can see here some questions about what kind of qualifications you need. And I think that those information that my colleague Alberto would be able to, um, to share with you uh, and share what kind of qualifications you need. But I would like to ask Elena about uh, portfolios. And Elena, obviously you can talk us about uh, design and, and uh, animation, but 
um, those principles that for the the, the principles to prepare a portfolio are very similar to uh, landscape and uh, architecture as well. So tell us a bit about what is the process and what kind of portfolios we're expecting and what is the process for interviewing students. Yes, of course. Thank you, Anastasius. Uh, to, to put it plainly, what we expect to see in a portfolio is a wide range of experimentation from your part. Uh, so we're not asking for perfection. That's our job to do during your study. So we're not asking for someone who is like uh, doing excellent work in InDesign, for example. We are expecting people who can demonstrate uh, that they have an understanding from a wide range of, of principles that relate to creative practices. So uh, we've had applications in the past from people who... Um, uh, gave us experiments in watercolor and then in Photoshop or in live drawing and then in branding and advertising. Uh, we do want to see that you can work on with many different tools and you can be proficient in communicating your message. Uh, so this is the main principle behind our portfolios and the submission of these portfolios. Now, during the interview, what we mainly do is we're going through your portfolio is asking some questions regarding the portfolios themselves, um, your own relation to them, like which are the works that you find most pertinent to what you want to do in your life, um, which are the works that you're not feeling comfortable with, whether that was answering a brief or not, etc. And then we move on to ask you some questions regarding the application itself, like why you want to study what you think you want to study. Uh, and give some very important information about the program. So most of this information you can find online, but it's also equally important for each program before you begin to know the logic behind it. Uh, so for example, in our BAs, uh, both graphic and digital design and animation, the first year is the year where you experiment and where you try new things, new tools, new media, the second year is the industry year where you focus on real life issues, activities, briefs. And the third year is the year where you find your own voice. So by that time, you're already proficient in all the skills that you need to have in order to have a career in the field. But what we want you to do is find your own character within it. Uh, so that's the process more or less that we follow in our BAs uh -oh. in the... Design to add on this, if I could add on this, for, uh, especially for the other programs required also a uh, portfolio, um, it, it's extremely important to, to bring in your own tone of voice to your work. I mean, uh, and then through your portfolio, the interview will take place in a very friendly environment, either physical or online. So you will admit uh, other academics or also you get some support in your work. It will be more like kind of feedback towards your work rather than an exam uh, of an, an interview exam. So I'm going to go to media and I want to ask my colleague Maria uh, about, uh, about media in general, but also I would like to know more about uh, creative industries and what is different in the, in the media program we offer in Greenwich compared with other institutions, but also what is the link with creative and cultural industries? Thank you, Anastasia. Um, yes, this is a very good question that actually can highlight what media is at Greenwich because we constantly, you know, um, all we do is all the case studies we have at the media programs, they are uh, live uh, cases from today's media industries. So everything that you can see on the news now, we study, we analyze, and then we create projects about that. And also, uh, this work gets evaluated by, by media practitioners. For example, to, to give you a couple of examples, uh, we have a wonderful collaboration with Byline Festival. This is a festival of uh, independent um, journalism and independent media uh, in, in the UK. And every year they give awards to our students for the best um, work in independent media, best an, um, analysis of a contemporary uh, critical situation. And our students then go and work for this um, 
uh, for this company. Uh, also, uh, for, for example, for MA Digital Arts, we have a lot of uh, artists who are practicing artists, digital artists right now, coming uh, to our studios, to our students, presenting their work, but also uh, asking them to, for, for collaboration. For, so, for example, at the moment, uh, we have established um, a wonderful collaboration with um, some Greek institutions, but also there is a, an interesting uh, collaboration sound project in uh, Canada. So again, all our projects are actually also quite international. Also every year we go, I mean, apart from the last year due to pandemic, but also every year we go to some kind of creative media event uh, across the world. So we've already uh, visited Tribeca Film, Film Festival, Madeira Film Festival. Uh, we went to the sound uh, festival in Amsterdam. We are constantly collaborating with Transmediale uh, uh, it's a festival of contemporary media and networks in Berlin. Um, there was also an interesting kind of projection and a new media uh, festival in Paris last year where our students went to. So every year we keep in touch with this uh, key names in creative media, key names in the industry, not just in London, but across the globe. And uh, these partnerships are growing and we are uh, looking forward to inviting those who decide to study with us to uh, be part of that. Maria, fantastic, that's great. I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to pass from media to something more close to, but not similar. And I will go to, to, uh, to my colleague, Chris. And Chris, I'd like to know from you, um, we, we live in London and, uh, and London, it's a massive film industry. So how are we engaging the students in this kind of world? Uh, Picking up what Maria said about festivals, about awards, about employability. Well, we are currently hosts to Screen Test, the, the UK's National Student Film Festival. It's student-led and student-run, uh, but it's been uh, it's been at Greenwich for uh, for four years now, uh, and that really is an opportunity not just for you guys to get involved in the kind of programming of the festival and have a look at student work from all over the UK, uh, but also to then, you know, kind of reach out to people. Uh, you know, the, the festival's partnered with BAFTA, uh, the British Film Institute and Film London uh, as a few organisations, uh, and we get lots of people coming to that. So that's, that's one particular event that engages kind of externally. Uh, at the end of our studies, uh, at the end of the three years, our students, we have uh, what we call the grafters, uh, so the Greenwich Film and TV Awards, uh, and, and we uh, we reach out again to our colleagues uh, in, and, and peers in, in, in industry uh, to, to give you guys opportunities uh, to get your work seen. Uh, so I think one of our, uh, the last grafters we had, which was 2019, uh, we, we got one of our short films uh, broadcast on London Live. Uh, you know, what, that was one of the prizes from, from our colleagues there. Um, and then, of course, it's, it's partly about where we are, as you say, Anastasius, you know, London's this kind of uh, creative hub. There's a film festival happening every week in London. Lots of them have been online this year, obviously. But, you know, you guys have that opportunity, especially as students, to go, to go for free, to go for cheap, to have a look around, to attend panels. Uh, of all these people, to meet these people uh, who are working in industry, who are practicing in such a huge variety uh, as well. Anything from the very formal kind of Leicester Square side of things, uh, all the way to the kind of, you know, underground cinema like Deptford Cinema in New Cross. You know, I mean, it's these, these kind of very different worlds. Uh, and that's for each student, I suppose, to come to us and say, well, you know, what are you interested in? Sorry, I can go on for ages. You can. You oh, can great, great. I'm just saying hello to, to uh, Lim Jong here. He just say hi. Uh, so great. Uh, yes, Chris, you're absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, because I know we, have, we don't have much time, so I'm just trying to go from one place to another. So I'm going to go back to Ed. And, and I want to talk a bit more about landscape architecture, because it's the longest program we have in the school. As Ed is said, it's running for more than 50 years now. And we are very, we are very um, privileged to, to, to have this under the school, but also to be perhaps the only uh, landscape uh, undergraduate program in London. So I would like uh, Ed to tell us a bit more about landscape architecture, where our students go after they graduate, why to study landscape and urbanism. Thanks, Anastasius. You're absolutely right. We're, we're the only school in London that teaches landscape architecture at an undergraduate level through to masters. Um, our programs are accredited by the Landscape Institute. 
and students are primarily focusing on the the, the design of uh, landscapes and cities. Um, the the work of landscape architecture intersects, it kind of brings together uh, the work of architecture, of planning, of engineering. Um, and it's, it, it is, as you say, a, a multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary practice um, that uh, is, is growing in, uh, growing rapidly in some parts of the world, like China, there's hundreds of, uh, of uh, new schools of landscape architecture in China, where where urban development in particular is uh, is such a large part of. Um, so that was the changing landscape uh, there, and within within Europe, we we, we see sort of a, a combination of of redesigning old bits of cities as well as designing entirely um, so as entirely new neighborhoods and areas. Um, the interesting thing that I think about our uh, programs here in Greenwich is that it's the long uh, is, is that with the long history of teaching landscape architecture, almost every practice in London has graduates from our programs. So there's a huge alumni network and every year there's more jobs that are advertised and come to us than there are actually graduates. Um, our students are employed by former alumni and graduates. Um, and really it's, it's, it's quite a, quite a uh, fantastic sort of family network um, in a relatively small discipline, but uh, having the benefit of being in a global city like London is, is brilliant. I think that's a very good point you're making, Ed, because in media as well is a fantastic, uh, the, the placement uh, numbers for students graduating from the program, it is really high. So Maria can take us later, but before I go to that, Ellen, are you still with us uh, or we lost you? So, I'm here with you, yes. Great, uh, Elena, um, Telling, because uh, Ed is, it mentioned the idea of the alumni and how uh, we need to con and how we interconnect oh, with, yeah. uh, with uh, our graduates. I'd like to know while, uh, about what is happening while we are a student. When you are a student at the University of Greenwich, what kind of opportunities you have, either in design, architecture, film, or media, um, so what kind of opportunities you have for collaborations, for traveling, for engaging with the outside world? Well, first of all, we give the opportunities ourselves as a university. So uh, from, uh, from year one, there are opportunities that arise, for example, in terms of graphic and digital design for our students to design anything from our prospectuses to uh, promotional events, posters, etc. And across the years, there are always opportunities for placements. That's first. Again, keep in mind that we're talking about a London, which is a creative hub for all uh, disciplines concerned, from design to architecture to media to film. Uh, there are all sorts of interests, uh, industries that can employ students across the different years of study. And uh, also, um, in terms of traveling, Maria has already answered that question, but it's in principle that we're trying to uh, also adopt in all our programs. So we are having educational trips abroad uh, from typographic studios to film festivals, to museums, uh, to um, great architectural creations. We do, I mean, at least once a year, we do offer our students the opportunity to go to trips and see things outside um london and what was your last question did you talk about careers maybe you maybe you can talk about this but also you can talk about the sundays year that we are offering at the university of greenwich for students they would like to travel for one year and go to do a placement or career mm. somewhere and come back to finish their studies of Plus course what, what, what we call in the uk higher education system a sandwich year which i personally find very funny is basically when you put a gap year between your years of studies. So it's like making a sandwich of like studying gap studying. Uh, traditionally, this was used for placement purposes, as far as I know, Anastasio. So for students who wanted to um, complete two years of studies and then have one year of placement in, um, in the company of their choosing, in the industry of their choosing, see how it goes and then finalize their studies. That usually helped in students realizing whether what they think they like is actually something that they like, and then 
further focus on that very same thing before they graduate. Uh, what we are favoring now and what we're doing the most, especially in the design portfolio, is to promote the idea of different placements across the different years of studies. So we're promoting placements that happen, for example, at the end of year two uh, or at the end of year one, different placements or at the beginning of the final year of studies. Uh, a sandwich years would be an excellent choice for students who already know what they're looking for. So it's excellent because they already acquire some work experience that they can put on their CVs and also they acquire the contacts that they need uh, for their future employment. Thank you, Ellen. I mean, uh, also there's an opportunity for students to travel uh, in one of our partner institutions, either in uh, Malaysia, in SEGI, where media and communication dealing with, or in Vietnam, where design, or in Athens, where film studies, or, uh, or also in Egypt, where we have like, uh, we have some partnerships there, or even in the United States, in Chicago, College of Art, et cetera, et cetera. So, and talking about the partnerships, and you, you mentioned about employability, I wanna go back to architecture and Susanna. And Susanna, architecture, it's not, um, the structure of the degree or the profession is not similar to other disciplines because the students, they have to go through certain parts but also they, in order to get um, employment, the, some of them they have, might have to be a qualified architecture, architects. So I would like to know more about this. What is the, the, the life of an architect from year one to graduation and then later? You're still muted. Susanna, I will buy you the t-shirt. I'm telling you, I'm gonna buy you the t-shirt and mute. <laughs> I'm sorry, apologies. I, I'm, I'm not used to using Zoom number one because I normally use Teams. Uh, um, and, and, and architecture would seem to many people a long, long study path because it consists of part one, part two and part three. Part one is a three year course, which you get accredited at the end of it because because our degrees and our MArch are linked to the uh, professional accreditation. And then part two is a two year program. But normally in between, you take a year out, which is a, a study um, program. And then part three is professional studies, which is basically the law and legalities of being an architect. Now, uh, I've already forgotten what the question is, but but uh, OK, how do we go about things now? Now, we we take this very seriously. Employability is obviously very important to us. So we have this as part of our program in education already. It starts in year two, where we are asked to um, analyze um, a professional aspect of, of the, de the degree. And in addition, this year, we've started with the RIBA in conjunction with the RIBA, a mentoring scheme with with uh, fellow practitioners. Apart from that, as I said, uh, many of our, uh, our our tutors are already practicing architects, but we also invite many, many architectural firms to come in and be, um, uh, how would I say it, uh, to judge or crit crit critique your work. And they are very often very interested in that, as well as at the end of year show, which is, I personally feel, a very important thing where it's a display of student work, where the 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 professional public are in come in and they actually leave business cards, etc., because they're interested. Our, our our current level of employment at part one is. Um, something like 88 percent and and you know it, it it is that is extremely high um employment rate and 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 it, it's down to the um credibility of the course right um the profession wants to feel assured that people coming from our course can be trusted that their degree is of value Absolutely, Susan. I mean, like uh, we'll, I will say that for across the programs in the school that, uh, that we do, our graduates, they have a unique place in London or in the world. And, and talking about um, the employability rail, I mean, uh, it's good to know more about the student experience. And Maria, perhaps we, we can share some views about what it means to be a student in the University of Greenwich. And then and, and, what is more beyond the school of design in so, sorry can i just add i've just put in the chat 
we have a student support group in architecture, which is set up by year two students in BA. And I put that in there. So if you're very interested in finding out, these students are very, very willing to communicate with you, to talk about their experiences. Because I do, as Anastasio says, and as Maria will be probably backing me up on, is, is that the students here are the best advocates for Absolutely. our university. Absolutely. Thank you, Susanna. And the rest of you, if you want to put more links on there to help our applicants, just Maria, before I give you the key, okay, uh, for those that they are on Facebook or the, for those that they are on YouTube, you will get all these details via email uh, through our uh, recruitment office. Maria. Yes, thanks, uh, Anastasios, and thanks, Suzanne, for kind of starting that, um, answering that question. But uh, to put in a nutshell, being a student at the University of Greenwich in the School of Design is, first of all, being a part of community. So our student body is, is really, really friendly and creative. And that goes beyond the School of Design. So, for example, I just know from, again, from many of my students, uh, how many um, groups of support or um, clubs and activities they join across the university. So there's quite a lot of uh, societies, uh, depend, you know, societies that are formed according to students' interests by the students. Um, either through the student union or without it, that ranges from uh, groups on different um, cultures and languages and uh, kind of reading groups to sports events, to uh, uh, reading groups and film groups, watching the films together, things like that. But also our student union is very, very active uh, part of our university uh, as a whole. And it's an independent part, so we don't really, um, we don't really interact with that. We don't uh, tell them to do anything. They do everything themselves. They have a, a, an independent student body. They have their president and they uh, advocate about um, anything concerning to uh, the uh, student experience, student diversity, student engagement themselves by creating a really strong committee, which is elected every year. Uh, several of my students are on that committee and um, they keep continue um, Going back there, there's a beautiful building, a new building that is built for that purposes, and the Greenwich, uh, Greenwich Campus, uh, Campus Dreadno building where the student union sits. And this building belongs to students during their free time. They can, you know, go to the, um, there's a bars and cafes there. Um, so all the fun that you can have both during the studies, but beyond that, because again, being at university, and I think we've all understood it during this difficult year of pandemic is about uh, community is about communicating uh, to your peers and it's about things outside of uh, as well as you know the lecture but things outside of the lecture when you can chat to uh, people and maybe you go again dance drink and have fun as well as you know be Absolutely. <laughs> clever I and miss, creative. I miss the times Maria where you can go out with your colleagues or students to have a drink and this is where the best education is happening because you can discuss and philosophize about things I know we're running out of time and I have a last question to ask each of you. Uh, so uh, why your particular program or programs uh, uh, and why the students should come to Greenwich? Uh, and I give you 30 seconds each to talk about it. Chris, why film and TV? Uh, like I said before, we're a diverse community um, who encourage each other to push each other. Uh, to, to create better work uh, that, that not only resonates with each other, with our peers and with our tutors, but also enables us to be change makers as, as you guys go out into the working world uh, and think about who you are, who you're, what your voice is, what you want to say and how you're going to say it. Ed. Landscape architecture is a unique profession, Anastasios, as you know, and uh, at the University of Greenwich, it has a long history, but it's also pushing at the forefront of uh, design thinking. Um, we're, we're a small school, so every student gets uh, a level of support that is, is really unprecedented in uh, landscape architecture education. Elena? Well, I'd say, and I really believe that, that we're a close-knit group of colleagues who like one another. And that's very important. That that's something that you see when you join us, because that's the same thing that happens to our students. So we're a group of people that works really well with one another, students and tutors. As Ed said, the staff student ratio is excellent. So we have the opportunity to give all the attention that our students need. 
And last but not least, there's state-of-the-art equipment for our students to use in order to advance all the technical skills that they need uh, to become excellent designers, web designers, and animators. Susanna? I would say that um, University of Greenwich is a close-knit community of very supporting members of staff and students to one another. You are learn to become disciplined and professional, as well as, as being involved in the bigger picture. Architecture is not just a local practice, it is a global practice, and that is what we are about. And we put design at the forefront of it and which is one of the reasons why our students are, are appreciated by those in the top of the professional companies as well as the top design schools. Fantastic and Maria? I came up with three eyes so it's very international both in terms of uh, teaching staff and students but also in terms of case studies that we have you know we, we, do, we do things from China to Russia to Canada to UK to uh, Africa and there's a lot of uh, international teaching and uh, conversations going on it's also very interdisciplinary and this is the core of, of the media programs in at Greenwich you can choose your medium you can work on either in sound or in, in visual or in text or in um, academic writing writing or you can combine all of that the main thing you create the content that will be a very quality um will be boosting quality and creativity um yes and uh the third one it is very very interesting to learn about what was going on in the world today so it's if if you're you know if you want to know more come to us and we'll give you that thank you thank you all very much for your time i mean uh, the School of Design also, it does not offer only those disciplines that you've seen here today. We have a number of other disciplines uh, in construction, in building environment, uh, in, uh, in digital art, etc. So uh, it would be great if you want to know more to get in touch with, uh, with our international team. I'm going to pass it now to my colleague from the international office, Albert. Albert, that's yours. The floor is yours. Amazing. Thank you so much. That was super, super interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Anastasis. Thank you, Chris, uh, Ed, Ed, Elena, Maria, and, and Suzanne. That was really, really interesting to hear. Um, if uh, you uh, have any particular queries about uh, anything that's been talked about today, please do feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can either get in touch with the uh, uh, organizers of this event, um, study in the UK, um, you can uh, reach out to us uh, via email if you email the international office at international at gre.ac.uk. Uh, so today's session was uh, mainly focused on the School of Design, so we didn't have much time to talk about the application process or accommodation or the visa process if you're applying for a, from overseas or anything like that. However, there will be opportunities for you to do so if you connect with us. Uh, there's a number of events that we do throughout the year if you're applying uh, to study with us this September or perhaps next year. So make sure that you visit our website and leave your details with us so we can uh, keep in touch with you and let you, let you know about those events. Uh, but in the meantime, I would like you um, uh, for, for joining us. I would like to thank the panel uh, again for coming along and giving such a set information about the School of Design. So. As I said, thank you again, um, Rabina, Ravina and, and Rabia, if you'd like to come on, uh, just to, if there's anything that maybe has come up on Facebook or on YouTube at all. No, I think that's great. Thank you so much, Alberto, and to everyone else who joined us today. I'm just going to put down the generic SIUK email for any other questions, because I know you've been answering questions as we went along. Um, but for anything that we couldn't answer during the session, I've just popped down the email in the chat. So yeah, do feel free to email us and we'll get back to you. Amazing. Uh, just to say, SIUK are a very strong partner um, of the University of Greenwich, and they work very closely with us they will be able to support you with your application and anything that goes along with that. 
So if you have any questions or if you're not sure on what you need in terms of the entry requirements to make an application or how the application process works, you can of course reach out to us, but you can just as well reach out to SAUK. They are a great team. They work, as I said, super closely with the international office. So uh, do feel free to reach out and we will uh, both be very happy to help you. Great. On that note, Alberto, yeah, we think we'll say goodbye and we're going to end this meeting now. Thank you so much to everyone who's joined us today. Thank you so Thank much. You. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.